In the Old South, devastation characterized the region during America's Civil War. But the years between 1861 and 1865 were experienced differently by the citizens of the Rio Grande Valley. In the territory along the Rio Grande, between the Gulf of Mexico and Laredo, the experience of war can best be summarized in a single word. Cotton. So for many people living here along the Rio Grande and in South Texas, they didn't look upon this period as the Civil War, but spoke of it as the cotton time. Cotton was very important to the Confederate cause. The sale of cotton allowed the Confederate government to collect taxes that in turn enabled it to purchase war material and continue functioning. Cotton was also important to South Texas because it furnished us with employment and obviously furnished some people with considerable profits. The town of Baghdad was located on the southern bank of the Rio Grande and provided a gateway to the Gulf of Mexico throughout the war years. From there, thousands of bales of Confederate-grown cotton that had been carried across the river into Mexico were shipped to ports around the world. Today, the once prominent port of Baghdad is buried under the shifting sands of the Rio Grande Delta, leaving it nearly forgotten. 150 years ago, during the American Civil War, this community played a critical role in the Confederate economy. The expansion meant additional employment, additional profit, and certainly additional importance in terms of where Texas stood in the Confederate hierarchy. The best estimate we have is that the value of the goods transported in and out of Baghdad came to $162 million, but a dollar was worth a lot more then than it is now. Translating that in today's terms, the value would be $2,953,000,000, give or take a few cents. To better understand the term cotton times, you have to understand Tejanos and the role this group played in the Rio Grande Valley's history. The role that Tejanos played in the Civil War has been largely overlooked. Uh, we know today that almost 4,000 Tejanos served in the Confederate Army and almost a thousand Tejanos and Mexicanos from the Lower Rio Grande Valley enlisted in the Union Army in 1863 and 1864. Uh, this has largely been overlooked in the general histories of the war. The war was largely fought east of the Mississippi, which is certainly the case. The war had begun there at Fort Sumter and basically ended at Appomattox Courthouse with the surrender of Robert E. Lee. As the war ground on, cotton became a major source of concern to the Union. The entire Union strategy depended on strangling the Confederacy's economy by preventing shipping either into or out of the South. The cotton flowing out of the Rio Grande Valley punched a major hole in the Union's efforts. The events that occurred in the port enabled the Confederacy to resist longer than would otherwise have been the case. As the war went on, the Union blockade became tighter and tighter, and port after port in the Confederacy fell. So by the time we got to 1864 or 1865, Baghdad was really the only open port the Confederacy had. And when Lincoln put his blockade on the Confederacy, and this blockade became more effective as the war went on, uh, the only way Texans could get their cotton to market, and even people from as far away as Arkansas in Louisiana was to take it across the river into Mexico and then take it down the river either by steamboat or by wagon to Baghdad at the mouth of the river where ships from all over the world waited to buy this this Texas cotton. Citizens of Mexico viewed this time as Los Algodones, their own version of the cotton times. Throughout the war era, the Mexican border town of Matamoros was crowded with foreigners buying and selling cotton. As a result, Matamoros was a thriving and prosperous place, allowing many to grow rich from what some might call an infamous trade. During the cotton times, men and boys, too old or too young to enlist in the military, worked as teamsters. These hardworking individuals drove wagons filled with bales of cotton. And for this backbreaking work, a teamster could earn $10 a month in Confederate currency. For South Texas, there was also a problem, and that was that the cotton trade attracted Union invasions. When General Banks of the Union Army landed at Brazos de Santiago in November of 1863, he brought almost 7,000 troops with him, and one of his primary orders, one of his primary objectives, was to cut off the cotton trade. 
Although Union forces were able to seize the northern bank of the Rio Grande in 1863, upriver, Confederate Colonel Santos Benavides of Laredo helped make possible the safe passage of cotton across the Rio Grande into Mexico. In 1864, Benavides' troops fortified San Agustin Plaza with 5,000 bales of cotton to keep it from falling into the hands of the Union. On March 19th, they repelled the U.S. 2nd Cavalry at the Battle of Zacate Creek just outside of Laredo. Following the war and during Reconstruction, Benavides remained active in his mercantile and ranching activities along with his brother Cristobal. Probably the most prominent Tejano in Texas was Colonel Santos Benavides of Laredo. Uh, who was a captain in the 33rd uh, Texas Cavalry and then rose to become a major and then eventually recruited a regiment all of his own, Benavides' regiment. Uh, and he ranks as the highest uh, Mexican Texan in the Confederate Army, had essentially a really a brilliant record of military service. And his regiment was one of the few Confederate regiments in the entire war that never uh, knew defeat. Benavides went on to a prominent political career after the war. Another upriver site of great importance during the Cotton Times was the Mifflin Kennedy Warehouse at Davis Landing in what is now Rio Grande City. The hub for a far-flung mercantile network of steamboats, wagons, brokerages, and other business enterprises, it can be said that the Mifflin Kennedy Warehouse helped spur the Cotton Times. The warehouse was built in 1854 near the steamboat landing on Water Street, which at the height of the Cotton Times was an official Confederate port of entry. No matter how remote we may think our area is, it really was not remote in terms of national events or for that matter international events. The events that took place in this valley demonstrated that the United States was not a nation isolated from the rest of the world. We were already a part of the global economy and we were also a part of the global political balance. We all like to use the term globalization to refer to what's happening nowadays, but in an important sense, globalization also existed back then. We were part of a much larger trade network. As the Civil War era faded into memory, the excitement of the Cotton Times was preserved in such architectural monuments as Rio Grande City's Mifflin Kennedy Warehouse, Brownsville's Neal House, and other sites on the Rio Grande Valley Civil War Trail, as well as in the memories of the region's Civil War veterans, both those who fought and those whose mercantile activities made the Cotton Times a reality.